back to Metro Dark City. As you can probably figure out, we've been doing some house cleaning. During that time, we've stumbled upon a few boxes full of some oldies but goodies. Stories from the very eclectic side of Japan's Nichan boards. Here, in the Okorto section, you'll find some of the creepiest creepypasta you've ever read. Or, as I like to call the ones from Japan, Spooky Soba. With that said, grab your favorite drink, take a seat, and enjoy being terrified. The following post was on Nichan in the Occulto section. It is the equivalent to America's 4chan, and the Occulto section is the equivalent to the X board, or paranormal board. This is called The Turning Boy. A university club decided to have a short group trip. One of the members brought his video camera, and he took many videos of the group having a fun time over the weekend. When the group returned and the cameraman started reviewing the videos, something odd caught his attention. The footage was filmed around midnight in front of a tunnel. It was pitch black except for the faint light given off by a street lamp down the road. From within the tunnel, a girl from his group came into view. She was waving at the camera as she walked closer. Behind her, to the right, was a boy that looked to be about seven or eight years old. Was there a boy there? The cameraman wondered. The girl, now almost right in front of the camera, was dimly lit, but somehow the little boy appeared crystal clear. He wore shorts and was facing away from the camera. There weren't any houses near the tunnel and it seemed strange for a little boy to be out alone in the middle of the night at this area in a dark tunnel. Still, the boy continued staring at something behind him without moving. When the cameraman told the other club members about it and what had appeared on film, everyone thought the boy must be a ghost. Several of them asked to borrow the tape to see it for themselves. They all felt a little proud about what they had caught on camera and began loaning the tape out to their friends. However, after a few days, one person who saw the film said something strange when he spoke to the cameraman. You know, the scariest thing is that when you see the profile, you think you should be able to see the entire image of his face. But you know, you can't. It's like there's nothing there. Profile? The cameraman was confused. He was facing the other direction in my video. Of course you wouldn't be able to see his profile, thought the cameraman. Another person also said something that worried him. You know, when he starts to turn towards you and you can almost see his right eye, ooh, that part is so creepy. What? Turns towards you and you can see his right eye? That doesn't make any sense. What is she talking about, thought the cameraman. What is going on with this tape? The filmmaker gathered everyone who had seen the footage together so they could watch the tape at the same time. First, the girl came out of the tunnel just like before. The boy stood behind her facing the other direction. He slowly began turning towards the camera until his right eye, which seemed to glare at the viewers through the television, was visible. The group suddenly became very nervous. The boy seemed to be turning more, little by little, each time the tape played. If they kept passing the tape around, he would eventually face the camera and whoever was watching the video. The hair on their arms stood on end and they agreed to dispose of the tape immediately. The following scary story is a Nichan post simply called Outlet. I first noticed it when my girlfriend came over to help me clean up my messy apartment. I'm bad at cleaning things up, so my apartment sometimes gets filled with garbage bags and junk that I just don't know what to do with. It's not like I'm a hoarder or anything. I mean, I can watch TV and there's room to walk and everything, but I do kind of a half-assed job cleaning my own room. I'm a guy living on my own, and my apartment reflects that. Because of that, my girlfriend will sometimes come over to help me clear everything out. That day was the same as any other time she came over. 
We started on opposite sides of the room. Whenever she came across any books or anything else that wasn't obviously trash, I'd decide whether or not something needed to be thrown away. If it wasn't needed, we'd throw it out. The room was starting to look all right when my girlfriend pointed something out to me. Hey, come here for a minute. She was crouched down in front of an electrical outlet. I didn't know what she was hinting at, but then I noticed it. A long piece of black hair coming out of the socket? Whose hair is that? I stared at the hair and then looked at her. Her eyes filled with suspicion, and her expression was cold. She knew that all my friends were guys, so I had a pretty good guess at what she was thinking. My hair was really short, and her hair wasn't nearly as long as the hair she found. The thing is, I couldn't think of a single time I had had another girl over at my place since moving in. Her expression was starting to make me uncomfortable, so I grabbed the end of the hair and began pulling on it. It grew taut for a moment before snapping, just as if I had pulled it out of somebody's head. That sensation made me very uneasy. I dropped the piece of hair immediately without thinking. It fell to the wooden floor and began dancing around in the draft, wafting through the windows. I dropped to the floor onto my stomach and tried to look into the outlet, but my eyes were met with nothing but absolute darkness. The next day, I looked awful. I had completely forgotten about the hair coming out of the outlet. Right after my girlfriend and I had finished cleaning up, we went on to a karaoke date and got pretty drunk. When I got home, I pretty much passed out and slept like the dead. As soon as my eyes opened, though, I realized I was running late for my train. I hurried and got ready for class before picking up my backpack from the ground. As I lifted up the bag, my eyes fell on the outlet. Coming from one of the holes was a long, dark piece of hair drooping limply onto the floor. It was the same hair my girlfriend had found yesterday. It had to have been from the same person. The strain of hair was taunting me, as if it were some sort of feeler scoping everything out. The thought made me very nauseous, and I took hold of it and yanked it. My hand was yet again met with the same snapping sensation, as if I had just pulled the hair from somebody's head. What the hell? I plugged in an old radio and tried to block out the hair from coming out of it. I threw a few pieces of hair out the window and then picked up my things before heading to class. Somehow, I knew that the hair was riding the wind off to somewhere else. The radio I had plugged in was pretty big, and I eventually forgot about the hairs. My apartment was slowly becoming more and more cluttered again. When I took notice of the pile of manga towering next to my bed, I decided it might be time for my girlfriend to come over again and help me. In the meantime, I swept the area that were clean enough to fit a broom in and filled up a few trash bags and threw them out. About a month passed before things got weird again. All of a sudden, everything went to hell. In the middle of the night, I was woken by a rattling noise filling up the quietness of my apartment. I turned on the lights and looked around to find the sound was coming from, and it was next to my radio. More specifically, the cassette player part of my radio. Even stranger, it had moved. Previously, it had been behind piles of manga, but now all the books were knocked over, giving me a perfect view of the radio. Having just woken up, I initially wondered whether or not the sound of the radio had knocked all the books over, but that didn't really make any sense. The cassette player started again, rattling and rattling. I reached my hand over to push the power button. When my fingers reached the button, I realized the radio was already turned off. If it was turned off, what was making the awful racket? I assumed it must just be broken. I took hold of the radio in both hands and tried pulling it up, but I felt resistance. I looked over the other side and saw the radio had enough hair to cover in person's head, wrapped around it and covering the entire face of the radio. It was coiled around the electrical cord as well. I followed the cord with my eyes to the wall, where the hair was coming out. Again, it was coming out of one of the holes in the outlet, as if it were growing. In my state of surprise, I yanked on the radio as hard as I could. I pulled and yanked and jerked the radio around, and it felt like I was pulling out somebody's hair. When I pulled really hard, I heard a loud shriek come from the outlet. Finally, I gave one last really hard yank, and all of the resistance I felt gave way, and I almost felt backwards. The hair fell to the floor, and blood spilled from the outlet. I managed to scream before I passed out in fear. The room was covered in blood. The hair was scattered everywhere. 
I cleaned everything up myself and packed my things to leave. Maybe it was morbid curiosity that drew me back to the wall, but I checked the outlet one last time before leaving. A single strand of hair was trailing out of it, as if it were a feeler scoping things out. Well guys, what did you think? Those are two of my all-time favorites from the Nichon boards. I like both of these because once again they delve into very subtle horror. And there's always something a touch creepy about old VHS tapes. I don't know quite what it is, but old media always seems to pull a scare out of me better than most things. I especially like how Japan always seems to insert horror into our natural mediums. For example, you see a lot of Japanese horror touch on things like cell phones, computers, TVs, and in this case, a VHS tape. Something as simple as that being turned into a local scare reminds me quite frankly of, well, the ring of course. The Japanese version though, not the horrible American one. Or the most recent one, Rings movie? Oh man, that was bad. Anyway, with our last story, it's a simple hair coming out of an outlet, which is a pretty weird idea to begin with. I think it starts out pretty dark and uh, kind of squishy. So I like how it slowly takes that and descends into an even more visceral experience of, I guess, human grotesqueness, if you will. Things that can flake off and pull off from parts of our body, eh, they tend to give us a trace of the macabre, a very dark aspect that I think a lot of people don't realize, but in Japan is associated often with having a sort of pre-funeral death. For example, when Kamikaze would get ready to commit their own suicide diving into battleships via plane, uh, they used to cut some of their hair and some of their fingernails off and bury that as a pre-funeral. And that's kind of what this story gives me a sense of, a pre-funeral, whether that be for his girlfriend or for the strange ghost that appears to be haunting his tiny one-room mansion. Well, I think that's up to the reader to guess or imagine. And that's always what makes the scariest things in our mind, is our very own imagination. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for listening today. I hope you didn't mind me moving these two stories over from a very old channel. This isn't something I'm going to repeatedly do, but I did want to save these two wonderful little stories and send them your way so that they could be part of my new horror collective. Until next time, I am Scott Ackerman. I hope you have a wonderful evening.